Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Kasanoff. I'm a professor of English at Barnard College in New York, and I just want to thank uh, Dale and Jay and Meg and Paul for uh, inviting me to be part of this um, wonderful event. Um, about Mm, it's been several years now since I published a study that bore the distinctly unsexy title, Edith Wharton and the Politics of Race. In it, I asked readers to take Wharton's political conservatism seriously. The book explored the anxieties of an embattled white elite during a time of massive demographic change of labor unrest and political democratization. I wanted to know what we would see if instead of trying to make Wharton the politically progressive force we often wished she were, what would happen if instead we were to meet her where she was? In a United States where um, old money, upper class uh, white people feared that they would be supplanted by robber baron capitalists, uh, organizing workers, where waves of immigrants were changing the face of rapidly industrializing urban centers, and where people who had once been human chattel were trying unsuccessfully to be recognized as full citizens. I discovered that in confronting Edith Wharton, we confront racial plots that continue to vex these disunited states. We see, for example, how narratives of white martyrdom in novels like The House of Mirth inform the abstracting claims of liberal power that in turn fuel white hegemony. We see in a novel like The Fruit of the Tree how capital can romanticize a pliant workforce while disguising intergenerational wealth as meritocracy. And in novels like Summer, we can trace the biosocial strategies that consolidate whiteness by creating cross-class alliances in order to erect barricades against racial difference and class consciousness. In short, by confronting this wonderfully gifted daughter of the Knickerbocker elite, we can confront systemic narratives that continue to rationalize inequality and exclusion. We can definitely enjoy reading Edith Wharton, and yet we can simultaneously see what Louisa May Alcott called the poison in the sugar plum. I think it remains imperative that we do so. Thanks.